Thank you, President Goodnow. All right, this is my old neighborhood. I used to live on Chestnut Street for six years, uh, about six years. And now it's right down the block from me. I live, uh, you know, on Stephenson. Um, so this sounds awesome. Uh, the first question that I would have is, so, I mean, most of this is where the old uh, medical buildings are. There are still medical facilities that are operating. I mean, there's still a few, um, like doc, like specialists are still kind of located there, but I think, unfortunately, they're migrating away, which is really unfortunate for the um, elder facilities that are there. So uh, will the elder facilities stay there? Are there? Do you know if there's plans? Uh, I mean, because this all encompasses all of the elder care facilities that are in the low income elder care facility. There's a couple of low income elder um, residential places that, that I'm concerned about. Will it affect them? No, I'd say everything is will be a, a use that's permitted in the new zoning or even under the current zoning. When we've had a lot of discussion in the plan development, um, elder care was an important part. And I don't know if some of the word clouds that Garrett had in his presentation slides, I think some of those words are in the word clouds in the presentation. I don't know if you can look and pull that up. But that was one of the feedback we got in the early plan development is that having this place where you have all ages that come together and we didn't want to leave the elder care facilities behind. So that was a major emphasis when we did public outreach and the development of the plan back in 2019 when we started this. And this is Denise's district, so I don't want to steal your thunder too much, girl, but this used to be my neighborhood. Um, and so, and it still kind of is. Um, and I, I just have big concerns for, you know, I don't want these, um, these vulnerable populations, I don't want their rent to be raised on them because the area, I know people don't like this word, but the area becoming gentrified or economically developed or what have you, but I know that we need something down there because it's uh, there's a lot of potential, a lot of space. Um, and because it's my old neighborhood, I'm also like looking like on the satellite view on my phone and, um, and I can see that there was a lot of intention put into how it was crafted, uh, keeping ash, um, you know, that little section of ash separate um, as, uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot the terminology. I should have written that part down. Um, as not the the larger multi-use, but you have a small section that's out for just, um, is it high density? Is it gonna be changed to high density housing in that ash area or was it low density, medium? What was the? I, I can pull up the, the slideshow just a moment, I'm not. And I'm sorry, I have it up, but what I was really wanting to make sure of is that I kept, cause I'm gonna ask you about community feedback. Um, so I wanted to keep, I wanted to make sure I had the community feedback up. So I didn't wanna go to that picture and lose what my train of thought with the community feedback. But yeah, if you have that picture of the proposed change all in pink. Yeah, uh, and maybe that's not ash, is it? It's not ash. That is um, Cherry Avenue, okay. And cause there's still, you know, there's houses there. Um, oh, and so that would, that would remain as center residential low. Okay. Yeah, it looks like on Ash Street, which is, it looks like that's outside of the sub area plan, right? No, yeah, Cherry Avenue. I apologize. It's adjacent to, to Ash. Oh, okay. Um, I, I apologize. Cherry Avenue, where there's still, there's still houses. And um, I think, um, you know, this is the, the space that's carved out is primarily some of those um, buildings, those medical buildings and so on. And so I, I like the intention of that because what you've done is um, in this uh, in this sub area is that the real residential zones are excluded, you know, um, so that that doesn't change to a high density. And I used to live on the top of Chestnut Street and I did have a water view. And so looking at some of this feedback, I do understand that people are concerned about losing their water views. And I don't know the name of the curved apartment complex, but if that unit goes up to 80 feet, they, they don't have their water view anymore. So I totally empathize with that, but that's, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes when you purchase land and you're operating within the code and the law. Um, I wanna ask briefly about, um, about the community feedback um, because I, I'm wondering, I mean, you know, taking a look at the, it says it was well attended. Um, how many people attended the open house on, 
let's see, there was a planning commission workshop at uh, specifically the East Side Village Sub Area Plan online open house on the 28th of February. Was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people for that one? No, I think that it was attended by about 20, 25 people. Okay, just not everybody offered public comment. That's understandable. Um, I live near there. I don't know if I'm within, I'm not within 300 feet. So, but, you know, when you did your outreach, you did you, how did the outreach happen? Was it sent by letter? Was it flyers? Did you knock door knock? How was the outreach? How did that go? We sent out flyers to uh, all property owners and residents within okay. 300 feet of the sub area. And we invited them to the online open house. And uh, the online okay. open house was another uh, outreach method. Okay. So when you say residents, um, do you mean just like every single address, um, not just like, I don't know, registered voters, but like every single viable address, including, um, you know, some of these elder care facilities? Right. Okay. And um, were most people that attended property owners? Um, I think that we have gotten feedback from nine property owners. So I would say that, uh, that I don't think that they all attended either. Um, this is, I just saying like in total, right. I think nine property owners have contacted us supporting the plan. Um, okay. Um, some people weren't really identified or provided their credentials in, you know, it would just be like someone's iPhone would be what they were um, identified as in the online open house. And I think something that I'm always concerned about, and it's hard to get to get people who are, you know, lower socioeconomic status involved and you weren't, you aren't taking names and, and income levels when they're checking in at the, you know, um, I think that, you know, and plus there's a lot of military, there's a lot, of, I know this area pretty well, um, but I'm curious, uh, did you have folks, anybody from the elder care facilities that attended this? Uh, yeah, that people? actually leads into one of the proposals uh, there. We have a proposal for a senior housing complex from oh. I think 55 to 75 units. They're still playing with the final numbers on that. But they Thank are you. supportive of the sub area plan changes because the current plan is prohibitive to that plan moving forward. Okay, and I think I probably shouldn't say elder care facilities because they're not all elder care, they're senior living, uh, you know, senior living uh, communities. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, I, I guess, um, I know that the planning commission has already vetted this. They unanimously approved it. I as I see the in, the intention and in how this section was carved out. Um, I guess I have reservations um, just on um, uh, on. Um, I guess I have reservations because it would be nice if we were able to ensure that there could be some affordable housing reserved in here. Um, I think that's my only reservation because I, my, my concern is that if it builds up too much, that it will push rent up. And some of these vulnerable people that are renting there um, in and around, because right, I mean, beyond Chestnut Street, okay. So Sheridan, Chestnut Street. Uh, I know there's a lot of, it's mostly homeowners on Juniper. I mean, this is, you know, but there's a lot of um, apartment complexes and, um, uh, you know, duplexes, uh, you know, that are rented by low-income people. And so I think my only reservation for this specific plan is that I would love to see some way to ensure that there was affordable housing uh, for low-income residents um, in this plan. That's all. Thank you so much. You're off the hot seat with me, Mr. Jackson, Ms. Spencer. This is a, I, I think it's a well-crafted plan with intention.